In this video, we're going to look at how you calculate credit card interest. Now, the problem we're facing is that interest on credit cards is calculated differently from one bank to the next. So there is no single method used to calculate credit card interest. To help you understand why banks calculate it differently, I've just drawn up a little tiny statement here and we'll give this a statement period. We'll say this statement covers the period from the 1st to the 31st of October. Now because each item was purchased on a different date, it makes things a little bit more complicated. The groceries, for example, were purchased right at the beginning of the period on the 2nd of October. So they're going to accumulate interest for 30 out of the 31 days, okay? Whereas the clothes are going to accumulate interest for 20 out of the 31 days. And the fuel will accumulate interest for 17 out of the 31 days. So you can see that it becomes quite complicated when you're calculating interest on all these different items. So what are the banks going to do about this? Well, I found that one bank did this. It's, it had a statement saying we calculate interest at the end of each statement period by averaging the amount you borrowed each day. So they kind of find some sort of an average of these amounts. Other banks might make the effort and calculate the interest for each individual item that was purchased. I also want to point out that I've seen people solve credit card problems using simple interest and I've also seen people solve credit card problems using compound interest. So how do you know what you need to do in order to solve credit card problems? This video was actually made for my HSC students so that they would know how to solve credit card problems in their final examination. And the last thing that they want is to have a question where they don't know whether you calculate simple interest or compound interest, and they don't know whether you calculate interest for individual items or if you're going to average out the amount from each item. The last thing you want is an exam question that's ambiguous. So what I'm going to tell my students is this. We have been promised, we have a promise, that no matter what question has been given in the exam, it will be written in such a way that the process you must follow will be clear and unambiguous. So you need to read the question carefully and you need to have a good understanding of how to calculate interest so that you can solve these problems. Now to move on from this, I have four dot points and these dot points illustrate the most likely method that will be required to solve these problems. Now I can't promise that the question will use these four methods but more than likely it will. Okay, So the first dot point says that credit card interest is calculated using the compound interest formula. So more likely than not it will be compound interest. In fact, in the old syllabus, it was simple interest, and in the new syllabus, I've been told it will be compound interest. The next thing is that credit card interest is calculated daily. I've never seen it calculated any other way. The third dot point says, when calculating the number of days between the date of purchase and the payment date, payment due date, we need to include the day of purchase. Now, this might sound a bit confusing to some, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll illustrate this. Let's say I go from the 1st to the 30th of September. How many days is that? And a lot of you would go, oh, that's, that's easy, that's 30 days, and you would be correct, okay? Well, what if we went from the 25th to the 30th of September? And a lot of people would say five days. Now this one is actually incorrect. And people usually do it because they go, oh, well, that's 30 minus 25, 
which is 5, right? But let's have a look at this. If I go from the 25th to the 30th, well, let's count up. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And if you count that, that's actually 6 days. And it's 6 days because we included the 25th in our count. In fact, if you really think of the first example here, if we had subtracted it and gone 30 minus 1, we actually would have got 29 days. So, you'll notice a little pointer here. Usually we add 1 to the number of days we count, meaning you subtract them and then add 1 afterwards. Okay, so be very, very careful with that. And the next one, we need to subtract any interest-free days. So if you're getting 44 interest-free days and the period was 46 days, then you're only going to pay two days worth of interest. Okay, so these are some pointers remembering that it is possible that the question could change in such a way that one of these dot points I've given you is actually incorrect. So you have to read the question carefully. Anyway, that concludes our video talking about calculating credit card interest. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.